Hello everybody, my name is Volker Fröhlich. I've been using Sadix for like two years now and most often it's a very pleasant experience but some of the time it gave me some stomach ache. That was when somebody rushed into my office, gave, giving me a look, much like one you can see in the background there, saying I was not notified, I had an issue, what has gone wrong, that's a disaster, <clears throat> you can't do that. I would then investigate and find out that Savix was actually well aware of the issue, but still made no attempt to send an actual notification. Something must be wrong in my configuration, consequently. So I'd investigate the configuration, look in various places that are relevant for notifications, and eventually find the problem, or at least I would think so because I'd never know until the very same issue would happen again. And that's not a very pleasant situation, particularly not for something that's called an enterprise monitoring solution. <laughs> um, so I did something about it. I developed something. I'm not a developer. I'm not very good at it, but still I did. And I called it the Action Simulator. Has somebody heard about the Action Simulator before? One, two, three, quite a lot. Who's using it? One, two, more than I expected. <laughs> well, um, let's take a look. A challenge, I'll come to the challenge later, sorry. Um, a few details about myself then first. I'm working for the Medical University of um, I'm mostly everything that should be monitored. I'm the monitoring handyman. Everything monitor. Uh, well, I'm active as an RPM packager with Fedora and EPL. Fedora is a distribution that most of you may know, at least Linux on what their staging environment is. I'm doing that. You might be. For. Doing, I've also started packaging the alpha version, Savix, because we've got a update. See if we may not. It's 22 packages from my website. Watch me. I'm also somewhat active in Savix. I created another channel for the German speaking community which is slowly uh, gathering visitors as well. I'm an occasional author on the Savix blog. I've published on the packages, on creating maps, and on the action simulator as well. Once in a while, I feel like improving Savix and submitted a nice little patch. Some of them are not as nice. As I said, I'm not a developer. Um, if you're interested in the Savix patches that I run, it's mostly front-end patches or even only, you can find them on my website. I'd love to see some of them implemented in the not so far future. Most of them are even there for the sake of consistency. You can see that something is run on a proxy in one place and not in another. Some of these issues are addressed in some of the patches. Our setup at the university is nothing extraordinary. Some of you might run the same setup on their mobile phones. We have like 1,500 hosts, Ikes, Linux, Windows, networking gear, nothing special. 22,000 items, 11,000 triggers, there's like no CPU load on the machine, whatever. Also keep the new values per second very low. Now back to the actual topic. The challenge is 
know what is going to happen before it's actually going to happen. Sounds simple, but it's very important, I think. The first example I, I mentioned was you don't want to miss notifications. But there's another unpleasant situation where you'd get multiple um, notifications of the very same event, there's something in your actions that would cause that. And you may be eager to find that too because it's just annoying and littering your mailboxes. I don't want to hope that something is going to happen just because I think I set it up properly. Christoph Haas created a ticket on that matter in 2009. It's still there. Uh, what makes it so difficult to configure proper notification in Zabbix? The first and main thing is abstraction. There is no direct connection between a trigger and an actual notification. Much more, a trigger state change causes an event. Events are compared to action condition when an event matches the whole action condition expression of an action. Operations are run if possible. And there's also a somewhat limited flexibility in how you can set up those expressions because they are bound to a particular scheme and that is end. All the conditions are uh, connected by logical end or or conditions are connected by an or or and or same kind of condition types are connected with an or and those groups are connected by ands. That does not allow for something like application one and application B or just application C. That's plain impossible. And that results in creating a huge lot of actions. And then that's, that tends to be less clearly structured, more work to maintain, more things to look at when you're debugging. Another thing that is actually added right now, I think, uh, you have no idea which action caused a certain notification that was recently added to the audit log, if I'm correct. Let's look into the details of what can go wrong. You can do a plain mistake in your configuration, that is typo, set up the wrong host group inadvertently, deleted something inadvertently whatsoever. Uh, has somebody inadvertently deactivated an action before and wondered why he got no notifications? I would not admit it. You don't have to. Well, I have. I think one of the most common situations is action conditions just don't match and you wonder why and it's, it's quite work intensive to find out why. Right, that's about action conditions and now we get on to um, the operations. Um, first thing is a user, and that only affects notifications, not remote commands of course, may be disabled. He will not receive any notifications. User might permissions to a particular host, that's a very common situation. That's not all. The media type might be disabled global level. The desired media type is not defined for a particular user. There are also time constraints and severity constraints and all that. So you can easily miss something. It's a lot of work to, to check all that. I think if you're quick, you could check one action details within one minute if you've got like 50 actions, that's a lot of work, and you have to look really, really, really well. So what does the action simulator actually do? It's a front-end implementation, a pure front-end implementation of the relevant parts of the business code of the server as far as notifications are concerned. Why in the front end? Why not in the server? It's a duplication of code, you may argue, and I say you're right, and it's not as efficient either. Still, 
I'm not a C developer. I can, can find my way around with PHP, not with C. And most important, it was very unintrusive to do it in PHP. It would have required database changes and virtual events and don't know what if I had tried in C, I think. And there's one major difference between the actual server doing things and the actual simulator doing things. It only simulates things. It does not send out actual notifications. It is not a means of finding out whether your, your media script actually works. That's not covered by the action simulator, but it can give you a good overview and debugging info of why your action configuration is not working as you think it should. I started developing the whole thing around last Christmas. Like 80% of the code were written with me lying in bed sick. I hope you don't see that. Version one was very simple. It was a hack I, I brought up within like two days. Uh, it could just match um, the proper actions. It would show you why a particular condition was found wrong or not. Uh, it gave no indication of uh, the AI integration, nothing like that. That was the version I published, I think like five months ago or so, and now I was on a holiday and I was sick again. Right. So I implemented escalation, it's still somewhat experimental. I don't know if it, if it covers every corner case, but it looks okay to me. It's vastly simpler than the actual code in the server. Um, API integration is there. I've added a new method. It's called action.run. And um, it's basically, basically an extension of what action get gives you. Uh, temporal settings are working quite well, as I can see, um, for action conditions as well as for uh, the media settings of a user. Maintenance periods are a beast, particularly if more than one host is involved and hosts go into maintenance and out of maintenance. Um, I haven't covered that yet, not really. Another thing I haven't covered yet is acknowledgement because you can have, you can stop escalation by acknowledging things, right? And now I'll dare to give you a small live demo of, I've prepared three small examples that I think you can find in the wild. Um, that's the list of actions I have defined. I tried to, to, give, uh, to give them somewhat descriptive names. First one is a disabled action. You can see that on the right, um, the action is disabled, so it won't catch whatsoever. Um, the second one is one that would cause duplicate messages in many cases um, because it matches most hosts or most triggers actually. Um, the other one is set up to show that there are media issues like uh, time settings don't correspond with when the action or when the, when the event occurs. Um, no media div uh, type defined for that particular user and so forth. And um, there is one that demonstrates escalation. The other ones are just very simple. And uh, this one, this one um, has a minor typo. It probably won't match what we desired it to match. And the other one is a, a common pitfall. When you're using and and or, and you think, hmm, I want notifications for a host that is in this group and this group, but not in that group. Don't try adding a not because that's not what's going uh, to, to work out as you intended. Of course it won't. It's, it's, it's actually plain to see, but it still happened to me, to be honest. Right, on to the hosts. I created three hosts. I've got one trigger each. And if you wonder how the action simulator integrates into the front end, it's just one small place. It's on the trigger list view. 
one additional column over here, actions question mark. Shall we look into this one? Okay, this one is here to demonstrate um, that an action just didn't match. It's the one with the typo, SSSSSHD. Uh, the trigger name has SSHD is not running and it doesn't match. We can see free box here, notifications, remote commands and action condition matches. The lowest one is like a debugging table for actions and uh, there's something weird going on in the notification because we can see notifications that we did not expect. And those come from actions we didn't expect to match. I'll go into that in a second. I'll just scroll down a bit um, to see why the SSSSD HD, um, condition did not match. Let's see where we've got this one. The sorting is somewhat awkward. It, it could be majorly improved in visuals. I've colored it for now. That, that um, column to the very left um, is about the action itself. So if that column has a red action, the action doesn't match. The one right over there concerns the particular condition type. So you can see that on the SSH HD um, line, maintenance status was all right and trigger value was problem that was all right as well, but trigger name didn't match. That's why this one didn't work. On the other hand, there are two actions that match. An action causing duplicate notification. That was the one not having very restrictive conditions. So it matches. And the other one on top, same goes for that. Host group match. Actually, it's the one where we did the not in the or, and that resulted in a match which we didn't expect in the first place. And when it comes to the actual notifications, you can see who is getting the message, which media type is supposed to use, what are the actual uh, details, and you can see that form at the top. You can set um, the exact time when the trigger switched, and in the, in the line below, when it switched back. You can see this time reflected over here, so that happened when the trigger flipped. And the column just to the left gives an indication of how much time has passed since this very moment um, the problem occurred. Um, in further columns, the action name, um, the escalation step, the operation that you set up in, in the configuration, I can, could add more details there, I didn't get to it. Um, uh, the step configuration details, and um, on the very right, there's a column that says error. If this column has anything else but a dash, that notification won't go out. In this case, it's host permissions. The user show has no permissions to the host we just selected here. So if I wanted to fix that, I could just scroll down, and find, oh, I've got a typo in that condition, fix it, done. Let's walk on to the second example. Going one step further, caring about the media settings. We're going to the triggers list again. Click that. And find that there are a number of notifications that should go out. But the error uh, column is pretty crowded and uh, for different reasons, actually. That first user had host permission issues. But the second user actually had uh, the media type disabled on his configuration. Oh, we missed that. Uh, you can also disable media types on a global level. That's what occurred one line below. And you can also define those temporal settings and those severity settings that makes up uh, the remaining two uh, rows here. So we have to rework the user media settings in order to get that working and the host permissions in these other two cases. And the third and last example uh, shows something that is new in this version. I just published it on the website, labeled it 5A alpha because it's highly experimental. Um, uh, one little detail I added here, you can have uh, multiple events on a trigger, right? And 
of course, I can't really depict it here, but what I can do is give an indication that I will just have one situation of, of the Traeger flipping, and uh, that's, that's the, the note you've got on top here. And for the other trigger, I've got dependency. Now wait, that's the right one. Oh yeah, there it is. Depends on, it gives you an indication that this trigger is actually dependent. There is, it doesn't have a trigger dependency because you know that this trigger will only strike if it can. We assume that already. And now we're going to see escalation. I've got to warn you, the sorting is weird. Still, that's why it's alpha. Um, you can see that the very same operation is executed over and over. That's because it's set up as 1-0. Starting from step one, continue forever. Of course, we have limited uh, the actual uh, time window here, I've, I've hard-coded it to two hours for now. So what we expect to see is starting at, at around 3 p.m. and stopping at 5 p.m. So we don't expect any notifications to go past 5 p.m. And if we scroll down, that one right here, just before 5 p.m. is the last one actually to occur because we then expected um, the trigger to be resolved. And I can demonstrate that the two um, calendars over here are actually working by now. <laughs> it didn't work before. Uh, so if I change that to 1595, 59, and reevaluate the whole thing, why doesn't that work in Internet Explorer? Okay, it did work. 1559, the last occurrence of a message going out. And um, you may have noticed that there is a skip in interval. That's what's actually happening when you override the default escalation interval on an operation level. And I hope I got it right here. And there was one more detail of what's going to add. Yeah, of course, we've got, we've got some remote um, uh, commands down here that are also running escalation step number three and number four. And one more case, bad boy has been a bad boy and therefore been locked out of Savix. User is not allowed to access Savix. Right, so much about the examples. What is the conclusion we can draw out of this whole thing? In my opinion, it's a pressing need for an enterprise monitoring system to give users the, the safety to really get the notifications when they expect them. And these mistakes are not just beginner mistakes. They can happen ever so often, and the more complex your setup gets, the more risky it gets that something goes wrong. My implementation is very simple. It's like 2,000 lines of PHP code. It's a patch you can apply to pretty much every 2.0 version without any issues. It doesn't change any existing code in Savix. It adds some minor helper functions and it extends the API class, of course. Uh, and another thing that came to my mind that could be interesting for some enterprises that have strict rules um, about the quality of their monitoring and notification, you could audit. You could audit if there are any changes after you redefined your action conditions, for instance, or aggregated um, actions or throw away older actions that you considered useless before. And I'd like to give you a small testimonial that somebody wrote on IRC that I think is very nice. It says, Falter, I just cleaned up some alerting strangeness I've seen. All because of your tool. I think you should take the rest of the day off. Mind the timestamp. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, if you're interested in details, I've blogged about it. There's a small section in the savix.org wiki about uh, my thoughts on the issue. Um, code and screenshots are available on my website. The new version I just demonstrated is, is on there as well. It has a small change look. You can uh, go through it. I mentioned the limitations there. And last but not least, um, the upstream ticket and my contact data. Feel free to approach me anytime. Thank you. I actually have a couple of questions. Um, first, are you, have you started working on this for Zabbix 2.2? No, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't uh, even looked into it. Um, it might not be complete. One thing that I didn't mention before, this is only relevant for actions, for regular actions. It's not about discovery actions, and it's not about internal actions that were newly introduced in 2.2. I don't know if there is any situation where it could be beneficial or not. I have not thought about it at all. Um, the other thing, too, I... Uh, I'm one of the people who's on the IRC channel quite often, and I just want to say thanks for this kind of work. This is fantastic, and it's thank certainly you. been a help to many people. So, Very kind. Thank you. One more question over here. Uh, the question is, uh, why exactly is not uh, this thing Zabbix 2.2 feature list? It really shows. <laughs> well, I, well, I think I can explain. The thing is that the whole logic is built into Zabbix server. The whole, disc, the whole escalation logic, the logic about sending messages and executing remote commands. So it's not so easy, technically, it's not so easy to implement it in a way so that you click something uh, or maybe you, for example, the testing on, of actions. It, it, it sounds like a very simple thing. You click, some code is executed somewhere, and you get the result back, yeah? But the thing is, uh, I, I, there, there must be some very good integration. I, I prefer, to, to, uh, I prefer uh, this uh, quite sensitive code to be in one place, not distributed between Zabbix server and the front end, but it, it, sh it should be somewhere in one place. That's why... Uh, it's, 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 that's why it's, it, it's not implemented yet. But I absolutely agree. This is a fantastic feature. Yeah, it, 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 it must be. It must be implemented. But uh, yeah, I, I also see that uh, the, the, the Bakes Next request, it was submitted uh, how many years ago? Like five years ago? Four years ago? Yeah, and still not there. Uh, it's a shame. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, the second question is about... Uh, a bit more complex uh, actions, uh, which would include like multiple triggers. Is there any way to uh, get information about those actions? What like if you if you have uh, if you have like three triggers uh, with end condition, something like this. Three triggers with end condition. Uh, with end condition in an action, if I uh, I can test uh, one trigger and uh, see what actions are going to um, be executed and what's gonna be who, who's gonna be uh, n uh, notified but uh, if I have an action with uh, uh, three uh, triggers in a condition uh, with end condition so basically the all triggers must uh, trigger to uh, action to work w would it be possible to that's a very good question I haven't tested the scenario to be honest um, I think it won't work as it is right now but what is possible is if, if a trigger expression contains items from different hosts. That works just fine. So one of the possibilities of um, not getting notifications would be the inability to, say, contact the, an SMTP server. Is there any plans to put a simulation in for that connection? No. That's not the scope of, of my, my work here. Because that's, that's not the problem I tried to solve. Basically, version 1 was good enough for my demands. <laughs> I just developed it a little bit further to have something to show here that's better than what I've on the blog already. It's also something that 
would have to be in the server actually, because PHP might not be able to to, to trigger that kind of media. So it, it has to be integrated with some server component. 